Okay, welcome back. Next, we're going to discuss the dash, hyphen, parentheses, and comma. The reason I've lumped these together is because they are often confused, they often do similar things within a sentence, and they're often misused. So the dash, hyphen, parentheses, and comma are all parts of sentences that either break something up or combine something or set something off or really add or change the meaning of your sentence. And We'll go, each of the, we'll go through each of these one by one and we'll talk about how to use them, how they should be used and how they should not be used. And just to illustrate this, I've given a, uh, four different versions of a fairly similar sentence using different punctuation. And each of these four different sentences means something quite different or it can be only slightly different depending on how it's used. So the first sentence uses a dash. There aren't many different types of chemicals they can all be categorized by the periodic table. In this case, the dash is going to add some emphasis to what I'm about to say. Sentence number two, there aren't many different types of chemicals. They can all be categorized by their periodic table position. This sentence pretty much says the same thing. The difference is that I've used a semicolon to join the two independent clauses. And in this case, there is a hyphen. And what you notice here about the hyphen is that the hyphen is combining two words, whereas the dash is punctuating the whole sentence. And we'll come back to that in the next slide. Next sentence, there aren't many different types of chemicals, parentheses, they can all be categorized by the periodic table. Whenever I read something in parentheses, I think of somebody whispering that part of the sentence. They want you to know it, but they don't want to interrupt the flow of the sentence. This is usually something that is de-emphasized. Final sentence, this is using a comma and I'm going to talk about commas more in terms of how they're misused than how they should be used because there are many different types of ways of using a comma properly, but there are some ways that they get misused fairly frequently that can lead to, pretty some, to some pretty common mistakes. So here's one. There aren't many different types of chemicals. They can all be categorized by the periodic table. In this case, what happens is the reader puts in a comma because we often put a comma in where we hear a, a break in the sentence in our head without thinking of what that punctuation needs to be until you break it down into dependent clauses and independent clauses, etc. So here we have two independent clauses set off by a comma, which is incorrect. This should be a semicolon or perhaps one of the other types of punctuation marks that we're talking about in the next couple of slides. Before we look at these individually, let's have a look at some of the differences between the dash and the hyphen, because these are often confused. Remember that the hyphen is the short version of this and the dash is the long version. Hyphen is a short line that we put in between words to hyphenate words or to combine words. And I'll give a few examples of that in this presentation. So some of the uses, the dash punctuates the sentence, the hyphen punctuates the word. And you can see examples of that on the right. There aren't many different types of chemicals. And I've put a dash for emphasis. They can all be categorized by the periodic table. There aren't many different types of chemicals. They can all be categorized by their periodic table position. In this case, I've just reworded this so the periodic table is now a compound adjective to show how to properly use a hyphen. Now, in a practical sense, the hyphen is often used incorrectly because it's nice and easy to enter. You can simply press the key next to the zero on your keyboard and you have a hyphen. And for that reason, a lot of people just use a hyphen when they really should be using a dash. And so for the dash, it's a little bit more tricky, but not much. On most word processors, if you type a double hyphen and then a space and then a word, your word processor will convert that into a proper dash. Another way is to use your character map or your character codes, which we'll go through in the tutorials. But the point here is that you should take the time to use a proper dash versus a hyphen because it will make your, your sentence grammatically correct. In a technical writing, it actually matters to come across as a higher quality product and technically correct and grammatically correct. Okay, let's go through each of these four types of punctuation and we'll start with the dash. Remember the dash is the long version of the dash or hyphen. So its uses are number one, to punctuate a sentence by setting a clause apart. 
This is often for emphasis, and that's shown in the top right example. Okanagan Lake is a fjord lake in the remnant of Lake Penticton, a huge post-glacial lake. So in this case, I'm setting that apart. I'm giving that emphasis because it's interesting, it's relevant, and something that will keep my reader engaged. Next is as an aside. An aside is something that is probably interesting to your reader, not essential, might be directly related or loosely related, but usually something interesting or some non-critical piece of information that we want our reader to know. In this case, we have Okanagan Lake is a fjord lake, one of several in BC, and it's very deep. In this case, one of several in BC doesn't limit Okanagan Lake. It doesn't really tell us anything about Okanagan Lake. It tells us about all those other lakes. So we've set that aside using a dash. Other ways to use a dash are to interject and to list some examples and to restate information. So there are several fjord lakes in BC, Okanagan, Quenelle, Kootenai, and they're all very deep. In this case, I've listed some examples. Another one is there are several fjord lakes, long, deep lakes formed by glaciers. And in this case, I'm sort of restating information. I'm sort of defining what they are, but I'm setting it apart so that the reader will take a pause, see that I'm shifting gears a little bit and read the next part of the sentence and help them piece it will help them piece it all together in their minds, hopefully, if we've, if we've used this punctuation correctly. The next type of punctuation we'll talk about is the hyphen. The hyphen is fairly common, it has a few common uses, and they're fairly straightforward. This is probably one of the more straightforward types of punctuation to remember. So it's got a few simple uses. The most important probably is combining words into compound words because this can alter the meaning of a sentence and it can really clarify things if it's done correctly, but this is often done incorrectly, which leads to confusion around what is being modified. In other words, which noun is being referred to by an adjective or a set of adjectives. So I've given an example here. Chemicals can all be categorized by their periodic table position. If you've taken chemistry, you probably have pieced together that periodic table is a single item and it's the position on the periodic table that we're referring to. However, if you've never heard of the periodic table and those two words had no particular meaning to you, you might see this as periodic modifying the position. Without a hyphen in here, you don't know for sure what is being modified. So chemicals can all be categorized by their periodic table position. This clarifies that periodic table is a single word, it is a single thought or a single idea, and it's modifying the position. Which position? The periodic table position. We only use a hyphen if these compound adjectives come before the noun. We also have some numbers or some types of numbers that require a hyphen, and I'll leave the reading to you to look at those. They're fairly specific. And the last item is to clarify. So if we have two words that would be spelt the same but have very different meaning, and one word is more common than the other, we might want to put a hyphen in the less common word to clarify that we're not referring to that word that you might automatically read with your brain. So for example, if you just read the first sentence and aren't thinking too much about what molecules are doing, it might come across as reading like, under intense pressure, the molecules unionized, which doesn't really make much sense. If you put the hyphen in there, now we can see that we're using the prefix un, and the word ionized, so they unionized. Under intense pressure, the molecules unionized. I want to just mention one last use of a hyphen that we don't use in technical writing, and that is to split a word at the end of a line. This is often done in newspapers, magazines. Um, it is sometimes done in journals when they have very narrow margins, but typically this is not done because it is more difficult to read, particularly with technical writing that has a lot of long technical words that don't come to you automatically if they're split in half. Next are parentheses. Parentheses are fairly similar to a dash, but parentheses are de-emphasizing. So its uses are to de-emphasize information, to restate information. You, you would say that's, that the information has been restated parenthetically if it's in parentheses. You can leave an aside. You can include lists. 
one unique use of the parentheses is scientific or Latin names. And another is in defining acronyms. And you can see that in sentence five here, or in bullet point five, I've said scientific parentheses Latin names. So I've just used parentheses to restate some information. You might know them as scientific names. You might know them as Latin names. If you've taken a lot of biology, you've seen a lot of these names in parentheses. I'll also mention that if you have nested parentheses or some parenthetical information within a set of a parentheses, you would then use square brackets and they function ex exactly like parentheses within parentheses. They're just used as square brackets just because you can visually then separate where one thought begins and one ends. So let's look at a few examples. Okanagan Lake is a fjord lake, one of several in BC, that is very deep. And again, this is the identical sentence to the one I used earlier when I was talking about dashes. But now we're sort of de-emphasizing, and I mentioned earlier that I sort of think of things that I hear in parentheses as something you might whisper, or you might turn your head to the side and say, one of several in BC, that is very deep. And again, it's non-critical information. You can read the entire sentence with everything in the parentheses removed and still get the main meaning, but this just adds some context or some flavor or some detail. It gives the reader some more information. Next sentence, there are several fjord lakes, long deep lakes formed by glaciers. So in this case, what we're doing is we're defining a technical term. And we do this a lot in technical writing because we'll often do a lot of writing for the general public or for somebody who doesn't necessarily have a bachelor's degree or a PhD in science, and they might not know what a fjord lake is. So in parentheses, we put long deep lakes formed by glaciers as just a very simple it doesn't have to be a complete uh, dictionary or textbook definition, just something that kind of gives a quick explanation about what a fjord lake is. So that's a great use for parentheses. We can also use them for lists internal to a sentence. There are several fjord lakes in BC, Okanagan, Quinell, and Kootenai, for instance, and they're all very deep. Again, this is a similar sentence to the one I used earlier with dashes, and the only real difference is that the parentheses are not trying to emphasize that there are those lakes. So it's a subtle difference, uh, but one that takes a lot of practice and probably a lot of reading to get used to and to understand when one is more appropriate than the other. It's important to not use any of these too much or, the, or your work will become hard to read. In particular, dashes are fairly seldom used. These are usually done with parentheses because the type of lists and other additional information that you put in parentheses in technical writing is usually something that is meant to clarify and something that can actually be ignored if the reader doesn't need it or feel like reading it. So I could say there are several fjord lakes in BC and they're all very deep. I've omitted everything in parentheses and I don't have quite as much information at the end of reading this, but I still get the point. And the last is the scientific name. Okanagan Lake hosts Kokanee Salmon Onkarinkas nurka, and this is always done in biology. Any type of environmental science writing that has a biological bent to it, whether you're writing directly as a biologist or an environmental scientist or somebody who's looking at some natural system that hosts some biological species, it's good to put in a scientific name. Although it's often not necessary, it's just good standard practice for technical writing. Okay, and the last type of punctuation we'll go through here is the comma. There are many uses for the comma. They can be used for simple lists. And to illustrate that, I'll show a sentence that I used previously, but now I've removed the country names from the list, which makes the list simpler because there are not internal commas. So for example, the sentence on the top right used to say Easter Island, comma, Chile. Now it says there are many shield volcanoes such as Easter Island, Galapagos Islands, Isla Tortuga, and Kirishima. We don't have the commas within list items, which meant we had to use a semicolon the last time I used this sentence. Other uses for the comma are to separate clauses. They're often used with the words with, and, but, for, or, nor, so, or yet 
and they can often be used as an aside. I've shown an example of that in the second sentence. Most shield volcanoes, like the Kilauea volcano in Hawaii, are found at mantle plumes. So I've used this sentence a few times. I also set it aside using a dash and parentheses, but it doesn't really matter if you don't have any other commas in the sentence. A comma is a fine use for this. If I had a sentence that had all sorts of different commas and lists and other uses, I would probably want to use parentheses or a dash here instead. We also use commas with multiple adjectives. So in this third sentence, I said, most shield volcanoes form tall, steep, barren mountains. The words tall, steep, and barren all refer to the word mountain. This is different from when I used a hyphen, where two of the words essentially formed one word that referred to another word. In this case, all three are modifying the word mountain, or the noun mountain. So I want to say that the most common mistake with a comma is using a comma when a different punctuation mark would have been more compelling. So often we have sentences with many commas in them and it's difficult to know what is the purpose of each comma. So for example, if we have a list within a long sentence and then we separate a dependent from an independent clause and then we have a date with a comma in it, those commas just all sort of run together and we don't really uh, understand just by looking at it often what each comma is trying to do. So in this case we would want to use a different type of punctuation for either a set of the commas or one of the commas just to simplify it for our reader. A very common misuse of the comma is combining two independent clauses in a sentence. And remember I used this one earlier with a semicolon. Most shield volcanoes are found at mantle plumes. For example the Kilauea volcano in Hawaii. The reason people often use commas is because we were taught as children, at least as I recall, to insert a comma wherever we hear a pause. And unfortunately, the comma is not always the right choice to use. And so that sort of becomes a rule in our writing. Uh, wherever there's a natural pause in a sentence, people tend to add a comma even if the comma is not correct. So now go take a look at the link pages under these four types of punctuation. I know that you've probably read a lot of this before, but it's really important to get the comma right in particular. There's a lot to read about the comma, and you can probably skim the uses that are obvious to you that you know really well, uh, but take your time on any of the uses that seem a little unfamiliar, that you don't know just absolutely perfectly that it's the right way to use a comma. So spend your time on those, and we'll move on to the next topic.